Hey, this is Brady at East Rosebud Flying Tackle here to tie a Ray Charles today. Uh, the Ray Charles is here in Montana between the Bighorn and the Missouri, probably the most fish nymph in the state I would put my money on. Um, it is a great kind of timeless sow bug pattern that fishes 12 months a year on tailwaters. Um, and along with that, once you learn how to tie them, they're pretty darn simple. So. I will take you through this one. And All right, so to start a Ray Charles, we're going to tie this on a 16. This is a Komodo K3769, just their heavy nymph hook. Um, you can tie this on darn near any nymph hook, truly. It's, as long as you have a straight shank, you're, you're good to go on this thing. So we're going to start with UTC70 and the fluorescent orange about three quarters of the way up the shank. And the reason for that, the one way you could consistently mess up this fly is by crowding the head because all of our materials are going to wind up ending at the head. So you want to give yourself just a little bit of room there and address this hook nice. We'll start there. So first here we're going to tie in a piece of monofilament just right down the side of the hook. Kicked it out of there, let's try again. Work that back to our bend. Okay, set that out of the way. Next, along the back, we're going to tie in a piece of tinsel. And this is just pearl flat tinsel. And we're going to tie that in right on the back of the fly here. Just like that. Let's set that out of the way. Next, we have two strands of ostrich hurl. This is in a light gray. You can tie this fly in pink, gray, tan, um, or a variety, a mixture of those colors. A pink and a gray looks really cool subsurface. We're going to tie those in along the side of this hook. I'll work up towards the eye. So we have three materials now sticking right off the back of the hook. The tricky part, like I said, with this bug is we can wind up palmering this stuff too far up the shank here and end up crowding to where when we pull over this tinsel to the front, we won't have room to tie everything off and you'll end up with a big bulky head or you'll jam your eye and you won't be able to get your tippet in it. So here we're going to just take these two strands first turn along the back can be a little wonky. Make sure you get it set right. And from there, we're just one after another palmering up this hook. And let's tie that off. Clip that out of there. Now we're going to take our flat tinsel, and pull it straight over the back. I'll turn that towards you here, see if you can see that. And what that's going to do is give this a really leggy effect. So it looks like the back of this fly is flat, and we have a bunch of legs coming off either side of this fly. So you're going to tie that off a couple times right behind the eye. Turn it back and tie it off a couple times. And right here, I like to hit it with a whip finish. That tinsel can be a little bit squirrely sometimes to where if you just barely bump your vise, it'll kick out of there and you gotta start that process over again. Cut that out of there. 
make sure it's set well. And now we can restart our thread. And I like to cut that thread off just because now it is, because I only whip finish twice, it is a totally separate knot. So we have two different series of thread wraps going on, and I just think it builds a tougher fly. Now our final step is to take this monofilament and palmer it up the body here. You can do your little wiggle wraps here to make sure you don't trap a ton of these fibers as we go. And all this is doing, it's segmenting your body a little bit, but mostly what it's doing is, is making this fly tough. It, without this, you'll probably good, be good for one fish before it falls apart. Tie that off right at the head here. Clip that out of there. From here, it's just a whip finish. There you have a Ray Charles. Timeless sow bug pattern. If you're planning on fishing any tail waters, you're gonna need this in a variety of colors. Thanks for joining us.